Hey guys and welcome to Fez Air Software. Today I'm going to be unboxing the SEMA Platinum SLR AK105. Hey guys and welcome back. If you do enjoy this content today, please do consider liking, commenting, subscribing because those interactions help me get seen by the YouTube algorithms. That helps the channel grow. If you want to support the channel a little bit more, all my socials are on my Discord, uh, on my link tree down below, including my Discord. And if you want to support the channel at the highest level, the join button down below will take you to channel memberships. Totally optional. Um, really appreciated. 99 pence a month for custom videos, giveaways and all that kind of stuff. Um, really appreciated. So we're going to get straight into this. So this is a uh, relatively new SEMA Platinum uh, SLR um, AK basically. So this is the 105 model. So the box itself is pretty uh, plain, a uh, bit of a, a label, a little bit of a diagram on the end there uh, and fairly bog standard. So nothing too special. So we'll, we'll move right ahead. So lifting it up, I'll uh, remove my receipt out of the way. And uh, pull that open a little bit. So we've got our Polish English target and safety information. We've got a uh, foam topper. We've got some information about uh, out of the box. It was doing a, approximately 400 FPS. That is from the factory. That is not this particular one. This has been downgraded for UK FPS limits. So keep that in mind. I'll remind you as we go on. So inside the box then we have got a mid cap mag and I will come I will confirm the capacity down below in some text. We've got a handy speed loader, pistol pistol mag style speed loader. That's quite handy. We've got a little bag of BBs that are never going to see the light of day. We've got a front sight adjustment tool. We've got the SLR itself, and that is one hell of a pretty piece of kit. I'm just going to lift that up. Just check the box or anything else. There is the unjamming rod, is hidden underneath. And that is everything, that's our lot. So we'll get the box out of the way. Ah. So, now I'm not gonna lie to you, I really love ultra modern AKs and this is pretty damn spectacular. Uh, really, really something nice. Um, so it is boasting a entirely metal uh, construction, it is fairly well balanced there's no sort of particular weight in if anything maybe a slight bit towards the back but it's fairly balanced you're not going to notice a massive miss weighting at all um <clears throat> excuse me the handguard absolutely love this handguard with the sort of raised rails at the front we've got a um railed gas block at the front this has got the integrated hop up uh, words confusing words the integrated tracer in the hop unit as well which we'll have a look uh, shortly and an integrated um, MOSFET system as well in there so what we're going to do is going to have a look from the start front and work our way backwards so we've got an um, SLR SFWorks SLR styled uh, muzzle brake um, not quite as chunky as I usually like, but it is quite a nice little look. It's quite a, a sort of an aggressive looking one. It does look cool. So the muzzle is on a 40 mil negative. You just need a T6, TOC6, just to remove the little set screen there. And it is a negative thread. So it's the opposite to what you would normally do any other screw. So what would normally tighten down will loose off and vice versa. So that gives you the 40 mil negative. Tighten it back down and then secure it back in with the set screw. Moving back onto the handguard then, we've got this obviously quite nice sort of M-lock based uh, slots in there, confirmed by the fact that we've got the M-lock logo on there. Uh, and we've got the rails at the front there, which are typically gonna suit most of your needs. We've got plenty of space to get your hand, <coughs> excuse me, your hand on that handguard. Now immediately, there is no real movement. The only plate thing that's moving a tiny bit is the dust cover. Hold that down, there's no real movement in anything. It is rock solid, as we've come to expect from SEMA. Um, so you've got the, uh, again, metal um, railed gas block on top, um, nice and solid, screwed down with two uh, bolts to keep that whole assembly rock solid. Um, it is really comfortable. There's no real sharp edges, even sort of the rails there. They're not really sharp, they're, they're nicely sort of shaved off just to give you that, that nice texture. Even barehanded, you're not gonna uh, you're not gonna catch your hand on anything. 
Uh, moving back then, obviously a little bit of SLR branding. We've got our serial number. We've got a fairly standard, typical uh, AK style receiver with a dust cover on. Now, uh, somebody on my Discord burped did comment that it would have been nice if they'd have had a rail dust cover on top. I know that would have been a nice addition. It's not a deal breaker by any stretch of the imagination. You know, it is still a lovely piece of kit and you've got plenty of real, um, real estate space there. You could get one of the rear sight uh, rails to mount an optic on there as well. Um, but coming back, we've got the, I do like these enhanced selector plates here. So you've not only got the traditional sort of catch where you can pull that down, you've also got the point for your index finger to catch that and pull it down. So with any AK, safe is the top option and it is blocked with our slightly different style trigger, which I do particularly like that. It's quite a nice little trigger in there. We've then got full auto is our first setting and single shot or semi-automatic on our uh, bottom setting. If I flip it over, we can see then there is some wiring on and around the hop unit. And after the shooting test, I'll just show you what that looks like. But that is a, a hop unit with a tracer unit integrated that runs from your um, AEG battery with an on and off switch. The mid cap we'll talk about now is a polymer mid cap, as you would expect from sort of modern AKs. You know, the, the mags tend to be uh, sort of polymer, bakelite, that kind of material. Um, Again, like I said, I will confirm earlier and again now on the screen what the capacity of that is. I'm suspecting about 100 to 150 rounds in that. Uh, and to put an AK mag in, in at the front, click back. There is a little bit of side to side wobble as is standard. I can't see that causing any sort of feeding issues. We remove that to remove it. We just put our thumb on the tap, click and the mag comes out nice and quick and easy. Now this is a mid cap mag and the reason that the speed loader has come is to fill a mid cap mag. So there is no hatch on top to open to feed those BBs in. It is entirely using this. So you will open this up, pour your BBs in, and then you stick this feeding hole into the top there and you start just clicking and the BBs push and compress a spring down round a track within that magazine until it stops. There will come a point at which you physically can't feed any more BBs in, and then it's full and it's ready to go back in and off you go. So coming back to this then, we've got the traditional AK sights, front and rear, and we have got an adjustment key to obviously adjust the front sights. I don't know if I can quite get down those. They are quite functional and you know, nothing overly special. Uh, dust cover, if we remove that, pushing the button at the back, we are wired to Dean's because it is a MOSFET system. You will notice there is a little bit extra in terms of wiring in there and stuff. And we've got a uh, metal hop unit. It does look like it's integrated and screwed onto the front of the gearbox, which we'll explore in the disassembly video. Put that back down, clicks back in place. We've got a traditional AK style pistol grip, particularly comfortable, you know, nice to get your gloved hands around, a little bit of sort of texture in there just to help with the grip. And then we've got our chunky SLR style metal stock, which I absolutely love. And it is foldable, so we're just gonna pull it, is it up, down, a little bit stiff. Personally, the stock confused me a little bit because it looks like it should sort of pull down. And for this bit to come down, it actually, stupidly, pushes up and then folds around. And it does lock into place there, and it is quite solid. You're gonna have to give it a, a bit of a tug to get it to dislodge, but then it will swing back round and we can go again. So you can <clears throat> remove this section of the stock, leaving the hinge, just two uh, chunky Allen key or hex head bolts in there. Put that back up. When it's folded, the stock is secured using these two screws uh, in here and they secure it onto the back of the body. So you are not going to be able to put a traditional AK style uh, stock on that because it doesn't have the correct attachment point. Uh, just forgetting, didn't cover the charging handle. The charging handle pulls back to expose our hot adjuster there, which is nice and easy to get to. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and test it as part of that. I've got a number of magazines. So I've got the Double Eagle, possibly is an originally a SEMA um, 150 round mag, mid cap that came with my EK47. I've got a SEMA, I think it's 200 rounds or close to 200 round um, AK mid cap. I've got a New Pro AK uh, flash mag. And I've got the, which is sort of like a high cap style, the ones with the 
pull card in the bottom and then and not the winder and then i've got the included mid cam so i'm going to test those all out as well as rate of fire the chrono and the range test so i'll be back in a second So lowest was 340.5, highest was 344.4, average 342.3, that's no hop. That's a fairly tight grouping to be fair out of the box. Just over 15 rounds a second, that's pretty damn good. Wow! <laughs> wow 25 up towards 26 rounds a second wow So I am back from doing all those tests. So I'm happy to report all four of those mags fit and fed absolutely lovely. No real issues whatsoever. Uh, maybe just a little bit of snugness, just getting it to lock in, but they all do fit and lock in and they've all fed absolutely beautifully. So I'm really, really happy with those. In terms of chrono, don't forget, this is not factory standard. This has been um, made safe for UK limits. So we're doing 341 to 344 FPS, which is a very, very good tight grouping of FPS. As you know, that, that sort of ranging is, is, is quite good. Um, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, really happy with that. Perfectly good for uh, UK limits. If you are buying a factory stock one, you probably expect um, about 400 FPS. In terms of rate of fire then, I was really quite impressed. Um, so it is running uh, about around 15 rounds per second on a 7.4 volt, which is an uplift from what we're seeing from a lot of the Chinese stuff, which is really, really good. And it's running at about, really well, you heard in the video, about 25 rounds a second on an 11.1. .1. That really sort of like, wow, caught, caught me off guard. I was not expecting that. Um, so just so uh, to confirm, as with all of my unboxings, the 7.4 is a 2200 milliamp uh, new pole 7.4 it's the crane stock lipo so that is what i always use for the 7.4 and then i use equally a new prol 2600 uh, milliamp 11.1 uh, again in this sort of like butterfly style uh, setup this triple one so that is what i always use for the 11.1 your battery may give you slightly different results depending on its mah and, and, and its c rating and things like that and the FPS that yours is set up at. But as a good indicator, you know, that's a really good one. Range of it then, uh, well over 50 meters, really, really happy. The tracer unit looked great, uh, pinging those BBs out. It's lovely to not have to put a, a, a tracer on, on the front, like I said. Um, a little bit sort of loose groupings towards the end of its flight. It is a 6.03 type bar barrel in it, and it definitely looks uh, better groupings than I've seen in other seamers. Uh, not amazing groupings but but pretty good and considering you know that's a pre-upgrade and it's doing well over 50 sort of 55 possibly further uh distance you know losing sight of them at, at long range i was really really happy with the performance i cannot wait uh, to go and try it out properly it was lovely to not have to put a hop unit on the front end a hop unit a tracer unit and things like that the fact that i could just set it going was absolutely phenomenal uh, so what i'll do is i'm just going to stick a battery in which we'll discuss batteries after the uh, gloved operation uh, but i just want to show you what happens with it now i brought a little screwdriver in because i did sort of turn it off and you can turn it on and off so i'm just going to put a battery in put that one on Oh, nope. So I'm just going to put this on. We can hear it boot up the MOSFET just beeped then. Now, at the minute, 
the hop unit is switched off. So it just looks like a normal hop unit. Now there is, it's not ideally placed, and it's one of the few things I dislike. There is a little on off switch down in here, which I'll show you up close. And if I click it on, you can now see in there it is lit up. And when I flip it over, it is permanently lit up. They also can't quite, there we go, down the barrel is also showing that it's lit up. Now, that's not necessarily always ideal, particularly um, at times in dark games and things like that. That may give you away a little bit, but the fact that you don't have to run a tracer unit on the end is pretty good, and it's powered entirely from your AEG battery. So the minute I kill the, the battery, there it goes, and I can turn that on and off as I uh, see a need uh, within a game and, and things like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So quite happy. It is a little bit fiddly. I will uh, get in close there. So the little on-off switch is right down there. There is a teeny tiny little switch in there. And I found the only way, the easiest to get it is with a, a little screwdriver just to flick it on and off. Uh, alternatively, you could just disconnect this cable here, which is rather delicately soldered onto this little circuit board and things. It's just an extra thing to be aware of to not nip in the dust cover when you're putting it on. Um, just put that back on because we're going to do the gloved operation uh, now. So, um, just obviously that with the hot unit was just something to think about. Move those out of the way. So, gloved operation then. Uh, thank you again to the guys on my Discord for suggesting this. this is a, a nice little feature. And uh, if you haven't noticed, I have found my brown gloves again uh, that I use for unboxing. So, let's go then. So, in terms of operating that is particularly comfortable with gloves on i've got absolutely no issues with that i did forget to comment that stock length a little bit shorter than a normal uh, ak stock length and it feels really comfortable that for me typically an ak with an ar stock on it is the perfect length and that's about what that is maybe a touch longer but it feels absolutely perfect as a as a, as a length um, so i'm happy that i can operate that i can operate the mag get that in and out. Um, I can operate the charging handle, the hot, it is a slider as, as we're used to. Um, there is a bit of a, a tactile click as it's going into position. I can feel it again. It's not perfect. It's not as be as good as using sort of just my hands without gloves, but it's not bad. I can get the selector very easily into position. It's quite a firm click. Um, you know, getting into the dust cover to change a battery is easy and I'm pretty sure I could manage that mid firefight that's on and the stock itself remember it goes up and over and over and back i am pretty happy that that is fairly easy to use with gloves you know in a, in combat without any issues whatsoever now batteries then um take the top cover the dust cover off now straight away this 7.4 i don't think it won't it isn't going to fit in there. In theory, I could, in theory, maybe sit it under there. I think the dust cover is going to catch it, um, so it's not ideal. The 11.1 .1 absolutely will not go in there whatsoever. Now, I've got some 1450 milliamp 7.4s. They do fit nicely down into the dust cover, uh, into the gas block there, and they get them well out of the way of um, everything. They're quite handy. I've got some uh, 7.4 thousand milliamp uh, giant power. Again, that will very easily, he says, oh no, I am wrong. It is short enough that it can sit there in the inside the top cover and it won't get inside the dust cover. I keep calling it top cover uh, and that will stay out of the way. That's not too bad. I have got a 1200 milliamp 7.4. That again, will go all the way down um, and out of the way. The 11.1 though, oh, we've got two 11.1s. So I've got a 1200 11.1. Oh no, it does fit. Oh the, yes, that's a win for me. So that 12.1 is literally going all the way down here. Wiring nicely sits in there. Booted up and that nicely sits out of the way. That is good. The 1100 that I've got though, will not go down there. It's a little bit too chunky. Again, I can probably just sit it in there and, and manipulate the wiring, and I could probably keep it out of the way of the, the dust cover. But 
if you want an 11.1, I would suggest that those are probably the best bet because they are going to sit all the way down at, out of the way in there and keeping your wiring as, as neat and tidy as possible without having to manage having uh, something inside the, the sort of the dust cover that could, you know, get mashed up and, and, and caught and things. So I hope you've enjoyed that. I've enjoyed it immensely. I think it's a tremendously solid piece of kit. Um, I think it's really well built. I, I love the feature set, the integrated trace unit, although may give you away a little bit. I think it's really, really solid and really, really um, just a great little touch. And it shows that some, some innovations are starting to come through again. We're kind of taking a step forward. More and more people are wanting the tracer units uh, and things. And if that's integrated, even better. Um, <clears throat> I can't see anything online about the MOSFET other than it's just a bog standard MOSFET. So I don't believe that there is any programmability in it. I think it is just bog standard MOSFET. Um, you know, I love the stock. I think the stock is a great length. I love the styling. Um, I literally couldn't be happier. The, the rate of fire out of the box, I think is, is fantastic as well. Um, so I will leave the usual uh, pictures at the end to a little bit of music. Uh, the follow-up video next week uh, will be the disassembly video. Uh, please do remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you next time. Bye.